Shalom. I'm going to start by giving all the praises, glory and honor unto Yahweh Bashum, Yahushai Bashum, Arachak Wadash. Double much to the elder apostles of the great millstone who rule well. And as always, peace and blessings unto the hopefully elect tabernacle of David, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Now, you know, the Spirit is on us to go into spiritual power and how that. There's going to be a point in time when the Lord is going to transform us and turn his spirit up upon us, making us supermen. And uh, of course, the opposition got an issue with that. You know, he find it absurd and ludicrous that that would even be a possibility. But, uh, you know, we don't we, we're not moved. We're not troubled by the incredulity of our enemies. Our enemies are supposed to have this mindset you know they're supposed to you know think that way you, know, you guys ain't finna have you ain't finna get no damn super super <laughs> superhero abilities y'all out y'all mind he, he's, he's supposed to feel that way all right but what this guy is trying to do is uh you know he's trying to turn what's good into something evil because you know, he's using certain words that brothers might say directed towards him and that's what he's basically focused on and that's why also you know to you Akim, you know be mindful of what you say you know when you uh, make these uh videos now of course you know the scriptures say that you know we're going to definitely do you know the lord said he's going to do in in edom according to his anger and his fury so there's no telling what the lord gonna have us doing but we know that that's prophecy that backs us up ezekiel 20 uh, five in uh, verse twelve to fourteen, and in many other scriptures, Psalms one thirty uh, seven and verse nine. We gonna we gonna get busy, man. It's gonna be a time of, of vengeance, and the Lord's gonna turn us up. We're gonna have that power upon us. But right now, you know, we're to be uh you know wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So you know, be mindful of what you say, because this devil will try to. You know, uh, uh, you know, take your words and put it back out there as if, you know, you're making threats towards him. All right. Titus 2 and 8 says, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. Uh, we're to really just be speaking what the scriptures say. All right. So that was just, you know, just a, a, a little quick you know, exhortation, you know, and, and, and don't get me wrong, you know, you brothers are in the spirit, you know, and this is what this devil don't know. He doesn't understand that there's levels to the spirit. And the spirit comes from the most high. Yahweh Yahweh Shai. All right. For different purposes. All right. There's there's times when the Lord will put his spirit upon his men to deliver us out of captivity, to go to war with our enemies and overthrow them, overtake them. He will put his spirit upon us to, to, to prophesy. He puts his spirit upon us to, 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 to receive secrets. He put his spirit upon us to do things outside of human abilities. So there's different levels to the spirit of the Lord. And if the, the, the spirit that comes from the heavenly the heavenly father, in which there's there's nothing that he can't do, then how is it a problem when we say that we're gonna be able to do anything with the power of, of the spirit of the Lord? So I just want to demonstrate that in this lesson, you know, even though he's putting out these little clips and you know trying to go against us you know, we can always use these videos as a counter you know to uh edify all right and and hey the, the way the spirit is upon us now you know with how you know many brothers especially in great millstone hey we're in maximum overdrive the way so many videos is coming out on a daily basis Defending the name of the Lord and defending his his word. The average person would think that we in freaking we got uh, 
hy uh, hyperactivity disorder. You know, like we got HD. But hey, we we, we hey, we 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 are hyperactive through the spirit and power of Yah Bashim Yah Shai, man. So let me real quick, let me uh, get that. We wouldn't be able to do this volume of videos if it wasn't for the spirit. Because that spirit of the, of the Lord is upon us. So we have a certain level of power right now. But just wait till the Lord actually increases it. He turns it up. Because like I said, there's levels to the spirit. So let me real quick. Let me get a Micah 3 and verse 8. This is uh, Micah 3. I'll start at verse 5. The spirit was on prophet Micah to call out the rulers and the, and the, and the prophets of Israel at this time, right? This is uh, Micah 3 and 5. It says, Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and cry peace, and he that put of not into their mouths, they even prepare war against them. Therefore, night shall be unto you that you shall not have a vision. You know, basically, darkness. The Lord's not going to open up your eyes and show you a vision, right? The Lord cutting off communication to, the, to, to these false prophets. It says, and it shall be dark unto you that you shall not divine, and the sun shall go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. So you got prophets out there you know, who are not in the spirit at all, and they're coming in their own spirit and they're, you know, blinded by their own heart, following after their own counsel, and they're not really prophesying the truth to our people. They're not giving the forewarning of the evils to come. They're giving them assured peace in a time of evil. So the Lord ain't dealing with them, and the spirit been on us. You know, over the years, starting with the elder apostles on down to reveal certain certain of these guys. And people be wondering, then, why these guys always going so hard on these uh these other Israelite camps and leaders? The Lord got that spirit upon us. All right. It says, then shall the seers be ashamed and the diviners confounded. Yeah, they shall cover their lips for there is no answer of the most high. But truly I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. And that's why the, 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 the spirit been upon us, you know, to, to get on these, uh, these false groups, you know, and Jake get tired of it, but hey, you know. That's the spirit that's upon us. So there's different purposes for the spirit of the Lord. Right now, the purpose is to actually be out there prophesying, teaching, preaching uh, the gospel. That's why it says in Isaiah 61, the spirit is upon me. Let's get that. Isaiah 61 verse 1, the spirit of the Lord power is upon me because the Lord have anointed me. You know, he gave me the, 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 the anointment, the oil. All right, which is uh, basically the, 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 the spirit. The spirit of, of truth to understand the word of the Most High and, and, and to proclaim it. All right, it says to preach good tidings. All right, because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And this is how we're breaking down strongholds and pulling Jake, you know, out of the world of darkness, man. Bunch of confusion. There's this wicked world under the vibration of uh, the serpent. All right. Jake captured in all these different religions and, and, and false ideologies and philosophies uh, uh, of this world 
and Jake listening to us and waking up and they're, you know, being, you know, freed from that. It says, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. All right, Jake bound to their, their sins in, in the flesh. And, you know, we've been, you know, cussing Jake out. Jake, you know, the ones that are meant for the elect, you know, they're, they're hearing and they're uh, turning back, repenting. And that's not of us. That's through the spirit of, of the Lord. Yah Bashem El Shai. It says, verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And that's also what we out there declaring. The day of the Lord's return, how he's coming. What's going, what he's going to do. Okay. It says, and the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all that mourn. And we're going to be comforted because the Lord is going to get vengeance upon our enemies. All right. And that day burns in his heart. But first, the Lord had to come and, and proclaim the gospel first. That's what he did the first time he came on the scene. All right. To minister uh, uh, the kingdom, the, 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 the grace, you know, to, to his hearers. Those that were going to uh, hear and, and, and walk and follow him. It says, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. So that spirit is upon us. Okay. So the spirit is upon us to declare Jacob to Jacob their sins and their transgressions and to teach them to repent. The Spirit is also upon us to, to preach the good news. All right? That a hey, glory is coming. The kingdom is going to come. Are we getting ready to uh, be delivered out of these chains of darkness and receive those glorious bodies, man? We're getting ready to inherit incorruption, immortality. That's good news. We're no longer going to groan you know, being burdened with these uh, bodies. All right. And imagine how much, how, how turned up the spirit's going to be then when we're, when we're changed. Because the spirit, you know, is, is, is holy. So of course it wants, it, it needs to be dwelling in a, a, a holy tabernacle. But these filthy, this filthy flesh that we got, But we're still going to be able to do great things. So let's go from there. And let's go to Judges. Because we're also going to be able to do mighty things, man. Let's go to Judges uh, 13. And this is when the Philistines, you know, came against us. The Lord raised up the Nazarite Samson. This is uh, Judges 13. Let me see. Uh... Yeah, I'll start at verse 24. It says, And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson, and the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Ashtoreth. All right, so the Spirit, you know, started to move him, you know, once he uh, came of age. So let's go to the next chapter. And you're going to see what type of things he was doing. All right, the Lord raised him up to be a judge because, you know, our mortal enemy at the time was the Philistines. So the Lord, you know, raised them up. So this is uh, Judges 14. And uh, let me see. Uh, I'll, I'll start at the top. This is what it says, And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother, 
and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath, the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. And there was a purpose behind why the Lord, you know, moved them in the spirit to go and want to get a woman of his uh, enemies. Right. Then his father and his mother said unto him, is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all, all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord, showing you that everything is of his will, that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath, and came to the vineyards of Timnath, and behold, a young lion roared against him. Now, this wasn't just no regular old, you know, tamed lion like you see in a zoo. You know, these these, these lions back then, they were they were fierce. And they, and they had size, man. They were very strong. They would rip you apart. They would tear you in pieces, man. All right. So just imagine that. And then just hearing the roar of a lion, I mean, that'll uh, send your heart beating. A thousand times, <laughs> a, a thousand uh, minutes per hour, man. Your heart would be racing if you, even if you was a hundred feet away from the lion and you heard him roar. That's how uh, loud and strong their, their voice is. All right? It carries a, 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 a force. But what happened? Verse 6, and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. See, you know, the things that the brothers are talking about in the spirit. These these scoffers, which, you know, show you that they're they really don't believe the, the scriptures. They would have you think that what we're see, what we're speaking is some type of, uh, of you know, uh, uh, some type of science fiction, you know, box office blockbuster. But yeah, you come across scriptures like this and you can believe that though. This wasn't no ordinary thing that he did. This was beyond human strength right here. And that was the spirit of the Lord that was upon him, showing you that there's levels to the spirit. For different purposes. Now, real quick, when you go to cross ref and read this uh, right here, and it says, "Now it is not intimated that he did this by his own natural strength, in which he didn't. If it was based on your own uh, mortal human strength, he he wouldn't have been able to do that. Not even Mike Tyson can do." Do, do no shit like that. All right. It says, but by the supernatural strength communicated by the spirit of the Lord coming mightily upon him, which strength was not at his own command, but was by the will of the most high attached to his hair and Nazare. All right. So that strength wasn't of him. It, it came by the spirit. The spirit is it, it gives you. The power and, and strength of, of an angel. We're going to be doing angel-like things, man. That's why it says what it says in uh, Zechariah 12 and uh, 8. He that is uh, uh, feeble among you shall be as David. All right? And as an as a angel. And we know the angels are known for their uh, their strength. Uh, 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 the, the elder uh, Shaman in the main camp, he did a video going into how animals already have spiritual power. The abilities that they're able to do. When you mimic their abilities, hey, some of Esau's technology mimics some of the creation of the Most High. You see? Come on, man. Who's going into how you know, you got um, 
you know, certain uh, insects that can lift or carry 40 times their weight. You got the ox that can, uh, a, a group of ox can, they can push or pull uh, 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 12 to 15,000 tons of weight. Because that's how strong uh, oxen really are. Because they're, they're, they're laborious uh, animals. You see? And then when you go into that account in Ezekiel, the first chapter, it goes into when when he he was describing what he with uh, uh, those living creatures in those wheels, those were angels that he saw within the chariots, and he saw four uh, living creatures and they had wings. He said they had the, um, the the face of a man because they have the likeness of men, right? And they look like so called black men, right? They look they they have the image of, of the father. But he also described four different animals that he saw these uh, the, the, their faces as these animals, but it also represented the abilities of those particular species that he described. One was the eagle and the eagle is known for having keen eyesight. All right, miles and miles up, it can look at an ant on a, on a freaking rock. And then it, and then it says that they have. Um, the face of an ox, and I mentioned the ox has is known for its strength. So angels have high level strength. So just imagine if the spirit came upon you and gave you angel like abilities. You're gonna be able to do all kind of shit, man. It's only laughable because these people are in the flesh. They're they're carnal. They don't believe the things of the spirit. It's foolishness unto them, especially a heathen like vocab. So let's uh, let's let's get off from that. Matter of fact, let me read the other translations on it. All right, uh, Judges fourteen and six, in the NLT it says, at that moment the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him, and he ripped the lion's jaw apart with his bare hands. He did it as easily as if it were a young goat, but he didn't tell his father or mother about it. Come on, man. NIV, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands as he might have torn a young goat, you know, a little baby goat. But he told neither his father nor his mother what he had done. So he kept that secret, man, that he even had those abilities. But that was all by the Lord. That wasn't of him. You see? So let's go from there. And let's go to the next chapter. Because he, he did something else while the spirit of the Lord was upon him. All right, Judges 15. And let's go down to... Uh, yep here we go judges 15 and i'm gonna start at uh i'll start at 11 it says then three thousand men of judah went to the top of of rock etam and said to samson knowest thou not that the philistines are rulers over us they got dominion over us right now what what, what are you doing what is this that thou has done unto us because he, he, he the one that kicked off the beef. Because the Lord saw an occasion with the Philistines, right? And he said unto them, as they did unto me, so have I did unto them. Right? And they said unto him, we are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hands of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, swear unto me that you will not fall upon me yourselves. All right, that's cool. Y'all can take me over there because I want the smoke anyway. But y'all promise y'all don't kill me. All right, so these were some Judites that he was telling that. They were like, hey, man, you bringing smoke our way, man. We're going to have to, you know, we're going to have to give you up. In verse 13, it says, and they spake unto him, saying, no, but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into their hand, for surely we will not kill thee. And they bound them with two new cords. And think about it. These weren't just no regular, these, these weren't no extension cords, all right? These were straight up thick ropes that they bound him with so that, you know, because they, they knew he, 
I'm pretty sure they knew he had <laughs> angel like strength. So they they tied they tied him up with two thick cords, ropes, and brought him up from the rock. And when the Lord it's like yeah, and when he came unto Lehi, the Philistine shouted against him, and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Again, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire. So these these tight, thick ass ropes that he was uh, tied with, as soon as the spirit of the Lord came upon him, they just they just they just broke broke off of his his arms, as if he he melted through them. That's divine strength right there, man. All right. Imagine, you know, like you can't even get out of cuffs. You don't even have the might to get out of, of cuffs of, of Esau, you know, comes and arrests you. You know. It says, and he found a new jawbone of an ass, a donkey, and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. That's divine power. That's superhuman strength. Okay. That that that's 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 beyond human ability. That's supernatural right there. For one man to take the jawbone of a donkey and kill a thousand men with it. I mean, you fight one on one with somebody for like two minutes, you 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 you're done. You're out of breath. You know, you you need to take a water break. But this man was fighting a thousand men and, and slew all of them. And Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps with the jaw of an ass, have I slain a thousand men. So he triumphed after that. All right. So it's amazing what the spirit of the Lord can have you do. Because there's levels to it. And right now, the level that he has us is right now, and we, we're in maximum overdrive, man. We're hyperactive in the spirit to, 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 you know, push these scriptures, push the word out, go into these prophecies, exhort one another, and tell you about the things that, that are, that are to come. But there's going to be a next level. You see, it's going to be a next level, man. And, and this is what they're hoping don't happen. All right. So let me go to uh, Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59, verse 19, it says, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in like a flood. The spirit of the Lord is going to get active. And this is what we're trying to tell you. As soon as these devils make they move upon the men of the Lord, the, the spirit of the Lord is going to get active. That's when things are going to turn up. You're going to finally start to see the right hand react. It says, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. That's getting, that's going to happen. That's what we're telling you. That's getting ready to happen. All right. We're going to, some, some divine like energy is going to come upon his men and people are going to be getting put to flight. We're going to have that ability again. Okay. And there's and, and there's you know many other things, man. All right, as a matter of fact, even when when it comes to us changing, when we get changed, that's going to be by the spirit of of the Lord. Second Corinthians three. I'm gonna start at uh, seventeen. It says, "Now the now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty." But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. So we're going to go from one glory to the next glory. 
And we saw what happened. We saw that happen with our Lord, Yahweh Shai. All right? It's going to be the same for us. Even uh, his disciples, they went from a glory to another. They went from being regular men that with, with occupations, jobs, having a regular life to when they started following Yahweh Shai, they start doing powerful things, man. They was doing some of the things that the Lord was doing. And then what did, what did the Lord uh, tell them? John 14. Good luck. Let me go down. Yeah, uh, John 14 and verse 11, it says, Be believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I shall do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father. And that's where the spirit comes from. The spirit, the spirit comes from the father. Okay. And Yahweh Shai is our access to it. Because we can't go to the father but by him. The spirit couldn't even be sent down until... He came down and, and fulfilled his uh, the will of the Father and, 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 and died on the cross and became that sacrifice. And that opened up access to the, to the Spirit. The Spirit was able to come down upon us. And that's why he told his disciples, let's go to uh, Matthew 28 and uh, start at 18. And it says, and Yahweh Shai came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, because he went from glory to glory. All right. What did, what did uh, Yahweh Shai, when, when he went and, and, sent, and made that long prayer, what did he tell them? He basically said, Glorify thou me as, as you have. As, let me see if I can uh, get that real quick. Go to John 17 real quick. John 17 verse 1, it says, These words spake Yahweh Shai and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. And as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. All right. So he's asking his father to hey, glorify me so so I can glorify you. That time is coming or that is, is come. It says, and this is life eternal that they might know thee that only true power and Yahweh Shai Mashiach whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. As the son of the Most High who sits upon his right hand. So you know he got all the power, all the glory. All right? The Lord can do anything. And he telling his disciples, the things that you see me do, you, you're going to do. And even greater works than these, man. So let's go back. So this is him giving them, you know, encouragement. All right. All power is given un unto me in heaven and earth. Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Right. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am all, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world, a month. All right, and he was with them. And and you know, starting from the uh, the, uh, the the feast of Pentecost, when all those Jews from, from all over the world was coming down, they witnessed those uh those acts, those works. And that's when they, you know, they converted a lot of brothers and sisters, man. In the day of thy power they shall be willing. 
So right now, just with the, 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 the level of the spirit that's upon us now, a lot of brothers and sisters are coming in. This is a worldwide thing. And all, all, all the, our apostles did and their elders did was just teach. And, and this, this movement is shaking the whole world, man. You had that clown Charleston White talking shit about us and said that and nobody don't nobody talk about the Hebrew Israelites. You know, ain't no poor people or no rich people, and nobody talk about them. And you a freaking lie. But I understand you, you know, you you you're just doing what you do for controversy. All right, you you know damn well we're 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 well known. All right. The scriptures talk about um being unknown, but um was that in uh second Corinthians or or first Corinthians? You know, as unknown but well known. All right, we're we're you know, Israel the the the, the he especially the one West groups becoming very infamous, man. So anyway. So you, you, you see that the spirit has different levels to it, man, and, it's, and it serves different purposes. And we're telling you, all right, you, you, <laughs> whether you uh, 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 a Christian, whether you the elites or whoever, that we're going to, the Lord's going to put his spirit upon us and it's going to be a di on a different level, man. It's going to be on a different level. Okay, we're going to we're going to have abilities that, you know, we would never be able to have just in these uh, mortal bodies, man. The spirit can do amazing things. All right, he could use us as battle acts and weapons of war. He can use us to prophesy, to, to receive uh, uh, mystery secrets. You know, different things, man. The, the Lord had them uh, healing people. We're going to uh, be doing that. You had the spirit caught away um, of Philip. It actually teleported him. But yet, it's, it's laughable when we say that we're going to be superhuman. This is our Acts 8. Yeah, I'm going to just get straight to the point. Acts 8 and verse uh, 38, it says, And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the waters when the Ethiopian eunuch was getting baptized. It says, Both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus and passing through he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. All right. So the spirit caught him away. Uh, the NLT, it says, when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. NIV, when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. And the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. He ended up all the, all, all the way in a whole other city. You see? He said the spirit of the Lord snatched him away. What, what the heck does that mean? You know, did, it, did the spirit just pull him by his garment and then, you know? No, he the, the it, it 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 caught him away. It it teleported him to a whole nother place. That's man, that that's come on, man. If Esau saw one of us do something like that, the investigation would be on us real quick. So and uh, you know, before I even uh end this lesson, I want to revisit that story. That brothers was bringing out about, I say maybe almost two years ago now. All right, you had the brothers, uh, uh, Elder Kazak in Mississippi, um, ICR from the, um, the Charlotte camp, the brother uh, Barack Allah, uh, the elder brother in uh, L.A. You know, brothers was going into this story, which this was uh, this was found in this book called um, 
It was called the the, the mystery, the, the the Ascension Mysteries, revealing the, the the cosmic battle between good and evil by David Wilcock. All right, and and he had confidential information, you know, secret government information that's not revealed to everybody, and he actually, you know, revealed it. He put put it out in a book. And when you read this, you you know, those of you that have, you know, you're you're you're, you're feeble minded, and, and you really don't have faith. You really won't believe this all right there was a it was a story about a figure that they found in Ag africa in the 60s which they referred to him as a a, a black jesus you know basically a, a a black messiah type of individual but what he was known for was his abilities his supernatural abilities man all right and i, I just want to read it real quick because it, it, when you read it it sounds like some fictional but this is actual confidential information all right the elites know about these type of things but they try to hide it from the public and when when i first heard this story man brothers was hyped man i was hyped you know this is uh the story and I'll, I'll read this real quick it says the story of black jesus says and so when i came across the story of the black jesus in david wilcox's latest book in which i actually have the book by the way it says uh, my discernment filter was on high alert the story sounded hard to believe based on my ordin my ordinary everyday consciousness and personal experiences however having david wilcox recount the story as coming straight from one of his trusted confidential sources adds a bit of credibility to it that did not mean i truly believed it or fully believe it to this day but I continue to try to make sense of this story in terms of how it fits within my current paradigm of reality. And certainly in this regard, it remains within the realm of possibility for me. Here's the story as recounted in the book. All right, so let's, let's read it. It says, one of the most surprising stories Jacob ever told me concerning a man they called the Black Jesus, which, you know, we know our Lord's name is Yahawashai. All right, it says, he said this was highly classified and he was definitely taken out of school to tell me about it at all. Apparently in the 1960s, a man appeared in Africa who had full ascended abilities. All right, this is something that vocab is, is uh, scoffing at, you know, the idea of. We're telling you we're going to have full ascended abilities. It says he could read people's minds materialized objects out of thin air and yahweh had the ability to do these things why think ye this in your hearts you know so the lord you know he he, he knew how to read minds all right communicate telepathically levitate himself and teleport his body from one location to another you know one body the one body leader he said oh that guy was a witch <laughs> That dude was a he he was on a, another another level, man. A, a witchcraft, man. That was a witch, man. Uh, Y'all believe these 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 fairy tales, man? Yeah, that that dude, man. The Lord's just gonna do something to him, and and either the Lord's gonna do something to make him believe, or the Lord's just gonna take him out, man. That guy is a complete clown. It says he was a spiritual teacher who emphasized love, peace service to others and forgiveness as the common core that unified all the great religions it says the cabal does not want anyone to develop these abilities and the, the cabal is another name for the globalist elite the, the international banking families the illuminati uh, they got different names that they call them the cabal and hell yeah they don't want anybody to develop those abilities especially us that's why they try to cut us off from our excellency was that psalms uh 62 they only consult together to cast us from our cast us down from our excellency they don't want us to reach these uh type of heights so they'll send a guy like vocab to to you know uh uh, uh send doubt in, into our people you know cast doubt and, and, and put doubt demons on you you know that you don't reach your, your fullest potential and then we see what he's coming with on the left hand side with all his super soldiers you know 
He's trying to give people abilities on the left hand side. Technology putting brain chips in your head so you can have a a, a perfect memory. You know. Give you abilities to walk if you were a paraplegic. He's talking about putting uh little tiny robots in, into your bloodstream to, to cure diseases, man. So he thinks he's the most high on the left hand side. He doesn't want us to <laughs> if he sees you with, with with the right hand power, he's gonna deem you a threat. You're an adversary. All right. He's coming with the power of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. But that's going to be countered by the spirit. He's going to be very uh, 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 triggered, man. He's going to be threatened. And he's going to be afraid, too. It says, and if they find out that someone has them, they will hunt those people down and terminate them with prejudice. Hey, will the scriptures say this? Because I read also in Isaiah 59 that when, they, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Lord will slip up a standard against them. Now let's go real quick to Revelation uh, 12. Revelation 12 and let me see. Or it might be in a previous chapter. It is uh, Revelation 11 and verse 4 says, These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the power of the earth, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth. Vocab. Really? You ain't know about this? That this is this is in the book of Revelation? They're talking about fire proceeding out of these, these men's mouths and devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So that's why we're confident they can come for it, man. Come on with it. And that's why they, they're tippy-toeing around us. They sending little weak demons like you, vocab. And what you're doing is, is not holding up. You can demonize us. You know, you can try to link us to terrorism and, you know, extremism, whatever you want to do. But you're only doing what the Lord said you would do. And the Lord said, blesses those, you know, that shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. The accuser of the brethren is going to be cast down regardless. All right. It says, these have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. All right. So the prophets always had power by the spirit. And I read a few of those. Elijah had, had had power. We didn't even get into that. That was through the spirit of the Lord. The abilities that he had, that was all by the spirit. All right, so let's go back and let's finish it. It says, uh, the cabal made several attempts to assassinate this man. He consistently regenerated his body after each attack. No matter how lethal it seemed to be. Right? And it was basically the elements being brought back together every time they did what they did. That's angelic. It says, finally, the man was told that they had given up. He was too powerful. He was far too powerful. There was nothing they could do to stop him. And they were going to surrender. They invited him to a major world summit and told him they would reveal him to all of humanity so that he could share his message. He was brought on board a military transport aircraft. Once airborne, he was shot repeatedly. His body was divided into many different sections. So they shot him up and then they, you know, basically hacked him up. Each of which was stored in a super high tech energy shielded container. Jet aircraft rushed up to the plane in sequence and scrambled the containers all over the earth as far apart as possible. The contents were then thoroughly and completely destroyed. It was hoped that this would prevent him from being able to regenerate himself. It sounds like science fiction, don't it? And this was done 
the man materialized directly into the offices of the people who had ordered his murder. There was no visible signs of damage to his body. Wow. He said, your desire to prevent me from living on earth is so strong that I am forced to honor it for now. I will be leaving you shortly. However, in the future, many more people will develop the abilities just like me. And that right there, man, the first time I heard that, that sent, that sent chills. You know, that, shit, that, that sent chills up my spine, man. He laid that on them. You know that they, man. I'm sure their faces was 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 pained. Once that happens, you will no longer be able to stop us from making this world a peaceful place for everyone. And that's a message to the elite. You won't be able to stop what's was was getting ready to happen, man. Because the, hey, this is the the Lord's doing. This is His program. All right, you cannot fight against the Most High. All right, at the end of the day, the counsel of the Lord is what shall stand. He can make the 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 the, the counsel of the heathen of none effect. He can take away your power, and, and he's going to do that. You see? So, yeah, man, this, this was a powerful story, man. And I thought back to when Yahweh Shai said in John 14, that the many works that you see me do, you shall be able to do. And you compare that to this statement. All right, in the future, many more people will develop abilities just like me. Hey, that's, hey, that's a sign to the elect. The Lord's going to turn us up. And this is definitely the spirit. This, only the spirit can do this. The spirit of the Lord, man. Because there is nothing impossible with, with, with the Heavenly Father. The spirit raised up Yahweh Shai, the spirit of the, of the Lord. So any of us that died, the spirit will raise us up in, in that time. And we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Just imagine that it just in, in the twinkling, just in a, a, a very snap of a finger, just within an eye blink, you now hold the abilities <laughs> that nothing, that, that anything that Esau created on his earth cannot hold a candle to. So anyway, you know, I'm, I'm going to stop it right there, man. I had to, you know, go in and do a lesson, you know. Uh, the spirit been on brothers to go into it and vocab hey you give us mainly the inspiration for it so hey thank you to you so hopefully you know this lesson was edifying i'm gonna give all praise glory and honor to y'all by shai and until the next lesson shalom